Oh, got real quiet. You have great things to say, starting with those shoes. Oh, the shoes. shoes. I mean, my cause, my cleats week. So I decided to support Seattle Humane Society. Uh, fun fact about that. So I, I was like, oh, I just got to help the, the puppers out, maybe some cats. But apparently they do like dog food bank type st services. So that was kind of fun. I didn't know that was going on. So super sweet. Sean Vigar did them, former teammate, former dog. So it's a good week to be a dog, I guess. Do you have a dog? I do, yeah, Moxie. She's going to be one here in January. She's, she's a big girl. Bernie's Mountain Dog. Uh, yeah. Who did you say did him? Uh, Sean Vigar made these cleats. Um, so he was a teammate of mine at UW, and then I got him kind of plugged in. He's been doing a lot of custom cleats for guys, so he does a good job. Um, real creative guy. Why that car? Um, well, I got a dog this year, and, uh, you know, was just trying to figure out a way to, you know, help you know, the other puppers around. So Seattle Humane Society, you know, big organization, and um, they do a lot of good work for the animals that, uh, you know, can't help themselves. So it's kind of, I guess as humans, we're supposed to help them out. And, um, you know, it's fun. I, I appreciate animals. They uh, bring me a lot of joy and bring others a lot of joy. And it uh, makes me sad if they're not uh, properly kept up. So adopt a pet or donate to the Seattle Food Bank, I guess. Though. When it comes to this office, what's the first thing that needs to happen? in finding the offensive identity of this team? Uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think as far as our offensive mindset is um, just go attack. You know, there's really uh, nothing to hold back. Um, you know, we have the players, you know, we just got to go out there and execute, put it all together and uh, just be attacking. That's who we want to be. We, we're not, uh, no one in our locker room is reserved at all. We all want to play till the quarter, you know, till it says zero on the clock. So we're just going to go out there and be attacking for all four quarters. When your offense is at its best, what do you think it's doing really well? That's a good question. Um, you know, I think Coach P would be mad at me if I didn't say starting with the ball first. So protecting the ball and then just sustaining drives, man. We've had some really good, like, you know, 12 play, 8 play drives. So just figuring out a way to kind of sustain drives. And, um, you know, you, you just give one of those guys an opportunity to get the balls in hand. and. Uh, they're going to make a guy miss and go and score. So that's kind of what it is, just staying drives and keep giving um, you know, our playmakers opportunities to go and, and score, make explosives on their own with their feet, and uh, you know, keep Gino up. That's really the recipe, I think. Well, when your run game is going the way you guys want it to do, what do you think that, that side of the ball does well um, with Ken and, Ken and Zach? Yeah, uh, you know, Zach's been a great addition to the you know, kind of one-two punch, K-9. Uh, Obviously, K-9 is special, man. He uh, can create something out of nothing a lot of times. And then um, you have 26 is the big bruiser. So it's just a nice kind of balanced offense. And you really get to know those guys and their styles. And um, so when the running game complements those guys' style, that's when we're really unmatched. Like, the defense doesn't know what play's coming, but it can be either the mid zone or the the power plays or whatever's coming. They don't, they don't know. And both of those backs do a really good job. I know K-9 ran a lot of you know, gap pole at Michigan uh, State, I believe. And then, uh, you know, Zach's a big bruiser, so he hits it downhill fast. So um, kind of just using them to their, their skill sets and, and just making sure that they uh, are running on little guys, you know, safeties and DBs. That's really the, that's where it's at its best. What was sort of the psyche, I guess, of the team at practice yesterday and all that? <clears throat> you know, uh, we had a long work week, you know, those Thursday uh, turnarounds, especially with Thanksgiving, it was uh, a lot of hard work uh, put in for that Thursday night game. And so just to, you know, take two, two days, refresh, and then come back yesterday. Guys were ripping, man. We had pads on. Uh, we were going. So uh, like I said, we're attacking, man. We're not flinching. Um, doesn't matter what happened in the past. You know, Coach P's philosophy is all moving forward. What can you do now? And, uh, you know, how can you help this team win now? You know, we have this week. We can't go back and play those other games again, so we're just going to go out and do our best against Dallas. Does the schedule just feel wacky <coughs> from Thursday to Thursday? Uh, I would say, yeah. I think it's like you, you play that short week. This is new for me even, is you play that short week against Thursday. You're already beat up going into the game, and then to not kind of have that extra bye week, quote unquote, is, is, is a challenge. But um, you know we've done a good job. Pete has a really good schedule rhythm, so um, we kind of just treat it like a normal week. you know. Monday, Tuesday, and whatever today is now is our Thursday. So uh, just kind of roll with the punches. Um, it's nice. Uh, I, I'm really proud of like our rookies just 
kind of rolling with the punches, man. They don't know what to expect, and they don't know anything different, so they're just putting their heads down and working. So it's 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 good to see. I was going to ask you if you know what day today is, but it sounds like you're just as confused as I am. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. I think we travel tomorrow. Pack your bags. <laughs> Of playmakers that you have on offense. When Pete talks about putting people in position to succeed, it seems like there's not as many touches to go around, right? Because you're trying to de deliver the ball to a wealth of playmakers. Are there conversations that need to happen, or is there just a general understanding among the offense that it might be feast or famine for you guys some days? Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of what I was getting at. Is uh, you know we just got to find a way to sustain drives because the more times you get. The ball's in our, our playmakers' hands. They're going to go and do special things. So I think we're just kind of killing ourselves on a couple of drives that are, are stalling us out early, and we're not able to get you know those extra touches to the guys that um, can go and create explosive plays. So um, that's really been the message, especially in the tight end room, is if you get the ball, just go and make something happen with it and uh, stay diligent, man. Keep your head down and wait for that opportunity, and then when it comes, you just got to make the most of it. Um, you know, a lot of effort. It's really is a high effort team. Um, we're, it's just a lot of hard work, really. Like third down, um, it's not easy. This league is really challenging. I think I've really seen it grow in the defensive schemes and how hard they make it with kind of their eight up looks. Are they bringing zero? Are they dropping back in the zone? Are they running man? So you can't really count on um, certain plays working. So the, I think it's it's just been interesting to see the league evolve as I've kind of played um, and how challenging defenses make third down. So uh, like I said, it's just like it's going out there and winning your one-on-one -on -one and executing and working hard really is what it comes down to. Finding a way to get the ball and going and getting that first down. Are you seeing more tendency breakers these days on third downs than maybe you were earlier in your career? Uh, yeah, it, it feels like we're preparing um, you know, for certain looks and then they kind of switch it up on us. So uh, like I said, we just got to stay diligent. Like it's 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 nice to see we kind of go in the huddle and they you know they bring that eight up or whatever they're they're thinking and you go and evaluate what our protections plan was and what our route plan was and well what did they do? Did they show us what they did on you know all week that we were seeing on film or are they running something different? So it's time to adjust. But we do a really good job. Um, Andy does a good job circling the guys up and making sure our looks are protected and um, Shane does a good job of of making the adjustments in game and, and going from there. I imagine you'll end up uh, blocking Parsons at some point in the game. But what's like, what is sort of the challenge with him? And, uh... Yeah, I mean. Uh... He reminds me a lot of Von Miller. You know, he really does a good job of picking and choosing when he gets kind of, uh, I like squirrely is really the best way I describe it, kind of swiping hands, doing swim moves, shooting gaps. So he, he, he does a really good job of kind of, you know, his game within the game. You know, it's a simple, simple scheme, but he makes it go with just his twitch and his playmaking ability. Anything else, guys? Cool. Thanks, guys.